Well, hey there, and welcome back to What's Feeding Me with Chef Andrea. That's who I am. <laughs> Y'all, I am doing a cookbook corner on What's Feeding Me with Chef Andrea, and I have not filmed a cookbook corner for uh, one year. So it's been a minute, huh? Um, so real quick, let's say welcome back. Um, good to see you, and thanks for joining me again. Um, what a year 2023 has been and about three weeks after I filmed Nourished Kitchen in What's Feeding Me with Chef Andrea and then the Nourished Kitchen this time it's personal telling you a little bit about where I was headed with and some of my journey in my own health and weight gain etc. Um, in January of 2023 three weeks later we had a flood at our house and that flood I literally just washed away any plans of getting anything else done that wasn't specific to putting our house back together and keeping our business going. If you are new here, welcome. If you have found me through a knitting chef on Instagram, you can find more of my cookbook corner um, and Q&A with Chef A videos on my YouTube channel that is under my business name, which is A Chef's Cooking Studio. And there's a direct link to that in the Instagram bio. There's a direct link to that on my website at achefs.com. And I just decided that it was time to get another one up there because I have a great cookbook. Okay, the book that we are looking at today is This Beauty. It is Dressings by Mamie Finnamore, 200 Dressing Recipes. So let's talk about Cookbook Corner for a second. When I originally started filming Cookbook Corner, what I was always sharing with you were cookbooks from my own collection. If you are new to me, a Chef's Cooking Studio is the cooking school that my husband and I own and operate here in Northeast Florida. And we've been here as of this filming for about 17 years. You can imagine that my cookbook collection is pretty big considering it's literally my livelihood. So in Cookbook Corner, I would share with you cookbooks that I thought you would enjoy cooking out of. Let's start with those. So Smitten Kitchen, Ina Garten, uh, the ones that I feel like you want those in your own collection. You and your family are going to love the recipes there. You're going to cook out of those books. That was one style. Another thing that I like to cover in Cookbook Corner are cookbooks from my collection that are collectible. I don't know that you need to own them or that you'll ever potentially cook out of them. So for example, the Betty Crocker 1970 recipe card box collection, remember that Cookbook Corner, or Miss Beaton's. I have an original copy of a Miss Beaton's from 1870-ish, uh, let's say. Uh, so it's just a collector item. It's really cool. It has nothing to do with how you're going to cook at home now. But um, today's cookbook, This Beauty, is new to my collection and it definitely falls in the category of the cookbooks that I'm hanging on to that I feel like you might want to add to your collection as well. So let's talk a little bit about the book and then we'll talk about how it, um, how it uh, it inspires me to make some changes in the way that I'm eating at home. So first of all, the book itself is Dressings by Mamie Fenimore. It's over 200 salad dressings. And look at the size of it. This is not very big. Um, it's small and compact. Um, it is precise and to the point. This book is exactly what it says it is. Um, it is 200 salad dressing recipes broken down by category, which she does in a little index, which is vinaigrettes, creamy dressings, bold flavors, sauces and dips, the sweet stuff, oil infusions. So real straightforward. I love that. The layout of the book is really great. Every page is, I'm going to cover up part of it. Every page is a recipe. So honey, black pepper, vinaigrette. There's the recipe. Um, every page is a recipe for a salad dressing. Roasted red pepper vinaigrette. On the corresponding page is either an inspirational salad, meaning a photograph of a way she might serve it, or just a very pretty photo of some of the ingredients for the dressing. 
What is not provided in this book are big layouts about um, how to build salads. Uh, there aren't instructions in here on how to roast the vegetables or how to assemble the ingredients for the salad. And to be honest with you, that is one of the selling points of this book to me. It's dressings. You know, most of us know how to build a salad, don't we? I mean, we already have our basic formula. Here's my basic formula. I always, every week on my grocery list, I put a box of organic girl, either superpower greens or masculine mix, one or the other. I always get a box of grape tomatoes. I like the little grape tomatoes and they do the heirloom blend that has the red and the yellow mixed in there. An English cucumber, so seedless cucumber. It has the thin skin that's under the wrapper so you can just rinse it off and you don't have to peel it. Fresh parsley. That's basically my salad collection for the week. So my base formula is greens, some cucumber diced up, some tomatoes sliced in half. Um, if I have a little red onion, I might shave that over. If I have some sunflower seeds, I might add some crunch, right? Some, some basics. If it's going to be dinner, then I'll add some roasted chicken. It could be a rotisserie chicken. I do meal prep and roast a lot of meats on Sunday or Monday and just kind of get things ready for the week. Um, so I've got some roasted protein ready to go that I can put on it cold or rewarm either way. And now what I'm looking for is just a dressing to kind of give me a little flavor pop, a little change in scenery, right? The base formula for the salad, I don't really know that I need a recipe for that. I don't know that you do either. So what I love about this is that it's very streamlined. Um, and the minute that I got it, I immediately fell onto a page and I thought I'd share with you a little bit of the inner workings of how something simple like this can d literally drive the way that I eat for the week. It'll change the way that I grocery shop and get myself set up for the week. Creamy horseradish, horseradish and mustard dressing. Okay, so I see that recipe for creamy horseradish and mustard dressing and I think to myself immediately, horseradish and roast beef. So now when I go to put together my meal prep where I turn my oven on 425 and I roast off a couple of proteins and a couple of veggies. Now I have some cooked items that are just in my fridge ready for me to steal from all week long to add to pastas, quick salads, an omelet, a frittata, a quick wrap, right? If I'm going to make creamy horseradish and mustard dressing, my thought process is, okay, so this week, one of the proteins I'll buy at the grocery store is prime rib. They happen to be on sale this week, so that works out great. I'll roast a prime rib off, and I will serve it warm right out of the oven for dinner the day that I roast it. But this creamy horseradish mustard dressing, you know what I think I'm going to do with it, is actually roast some red potatoes right next to that standing rib roast. And when the potatoes come out, I'm going to dress them with the creamy horseradish and mustard dressing as a side dish to my prime rib. Um, now what I'm going to do is cool the prime rib off, chill it, and a couple days later, I'm going to slice it thinly, and we will have roast beef sandwiches for dinner. And the leftover creamy horseradish and mustard dressing, I'll thicken with a little bit of mayonnaise and turn it into a spread on those sandwiches. So creamy horseradish mustard dressing. A salad dressing literally just defined dinner for me Monday night and Wednesday or Thursday night um, in two different presentations. It told me what I was going to do with my vegetable side dish um, and it set me up for a little grocery shopping that helps support that through the week, right? That is what's really exciting to me about this just beautiful collection of flavor profiles. It just sort of tells me where I'm going for the week. Here's an Asian sesame dressing. Now, she doesn't give you recipes for salads, but you can see what's in this bowl, right? At a glance, you can tell that she's got some broccolini, she's got some cucumber, she's got some um, red leaf lettuce. Well, you know how to put together broccolini, cucumber, and red leaf lettuce. Just chop them up and put them in a bowl. Uh, but then dress with this Asian sesame dressing. But I see this and I think to myself, Asian sesame dressing. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? While I'm roasting the prime rib, I'm gonna roast off a pan of shrimp too. 
And what I'll cook in, um, while that's going on are some rice noodles. Uh, because if I just do the rice noodles quickly and rinse them and hit them with a little sesame oil, I can store them in a Tupperware for a couple of days. And I think I'll do a cold rice noodle salad down the road. I might throw some of this broccolini in there, but toss those rice noodles and the shrimp with some of this Asian sesame dressing for dinner Tuesday night. Super quick, super easy. Um, a few words inspire the grocery list, the meal prep, and the way that I'm gonna eat for the week. The other thing I wanna say about a collection of dressings is that we often, I think, get into ruts with our own salad dressing making. I know I do. I have my basic Dijon vinaigrette for which I need no recipe. I know how to just whip that together. Um, my studio offers a collection of recipes to our students that are kind of our signature salad dressings. We have our version of a creamy ranch. We have is that cute? One of my customers gave me this for Christmas this year. We have our version of a creamy ranch. We have a creamy Italian. We have a berry balsamic vinaigrette. We have a Catalina, right? We have these fundamentals. I love them to just sort of anchor out salads at home, but I need a change up now and then. And you can see what happens with um, a collection like this, it just instantly sort of inspires even a change up in the way that you might be eating. The creamy horseradish and mustard dressing, by the way, am I going back to that dressing? I am. I was thinking for a vegetarian option for this, this would be killer over cold sliced roasted beets. So cold sliced roast beets, a little bit of goat cheese and creamy horseradish mustard dressing drizzled over on top. Maybe put that on a big, big bed of arugula to call that dinner would be great. It would be killer over warm roasted beets. So roast your beets, bring them out. And like I would do with my potatoes, toss those beets with this creamy horseradish and mustard dressing. Wow, it would be fantastic. Um, there is a um, photograph, as I said, on every page, which keeps this interesting. It keeps my mind engaged. It gives me some ideas about assembly. She does give you some ideas, like classic blue cheese dressing. And she says... Um, Perfect for spreading over a burger, uh, drizzling over simple, simple salad. A blue cheese pasta salad would be killer. Um, so she does give you some concepts and she does a Russian dressing and then shows you her gorgeous pastrami sandwich that she uses that Russian dressing for. But a pastrami sandwich salad, if you did um, rye bread croutons and shredded pastrami over, again, something spicy like arugula, and then drizzled with this uh, Russian dressing. Wouldn't that be a great salad? Like a great kind of hearty meat lover salad. Um, she's got so many great uh, ideas in here. Every page is beautiful. Her photographs are gorgeous. Again, I don't think you need a recipe to see that she's just put spinach, avocado, some um, feta and some sliced tomatoes in here. That, I mean, that's the recipe, isn't it? So I think they're very straightforward and simple in that sense. Um, I personally like to make a salad each week where I just dice up a bunch of cucumbers. Um, I put a cold, I, I've shared this with you guys before. I like to keep a can of garbanzo beans and a can of navy beans in my refrigerator so they're always cold. And then bring them out, out quick rinse with cool water when you drain them and they're ready to go into cold salads. So a chickpea salad or a navy bean salad with, and then one of these dressings will theme it out for you. She has a Caesar dressing in here that's eggless, an eggless Caesar dressing. I think that's really nice. Um, there's a lot of reasons why people might not want to put raw egg in their salad dressing. If you've got somebody in the family with an um, impaired immune system or they're undergoing chemo or they're elderly or they're very young, uh, there can be a lot of reasons for that. Her poppy seed vinaigrette, look how she served that. That's just shaved cucumber, right? Look how pretty. So shaved cucumber, she just sliced it thinly. She probably did that on a mandolin. You know, I'm not a fan of mandolins. I would just slice that thinly by hand. Um, and then she cross cut some, what looks like maybe Thai chilies for a little bit of heat and crunch on there. Beautiful. Um, I think these are so simple. This one, the uh, papillo pepper vinaigrette. She doesn't give you a salad, but look at that gorgeous photo. 
really beautiful 200 recipes this is becoming my little um, salad dressing bible is how that's going to work for me i am really loving this you can find this on amazon um but this is a great way to i think refresh your salad game at home this year as i said i think we all have our base formula and i think that's fine i don't know that you need to change your base formula a whole lot but switching up the dressing can change the entire theme just by going with a sesame asian suddenly you realize you want to put some cold chopped shrimp on it and some rice noodles tossed in there too and voila it's asian night at your house so i think it's a really easy way um, to create some creativity quickly. Mimi Fenimore dressings. Now that's cookbook corner. That's the summation of this book. I'll do a few overhead shots, um, as well. So you can see some of the photos in here. Um, I want to talk about salad dressings and I'm going to make this quick because this is quite a lecture that I do at the studio, which is we talk about bottled salad dressings and I am being specific to the United States here. Um, the reason I have to be specific to the United States about what I'm about to talk about is that the bottled salad dressing industry in the United States is riddled with preservatives and additives that for the most part have been banned for human consumption in other countries. Our bottled salad dressings tend to be loaded with things like high fructose corn syrup, banned in Europe um, and many other countries. It's banned in South America. You cannot use high fructose corn syrup in Mexico. So high fructose corn syrup, BHA, BHT, Red 40, Yellow 5, those four were banned in Europe in the 1970s. So 50 years ago, they knew that they were not safe for human consumption. They're still in our bottled salad dressings today. Um, and the other big industry in the United States is bottled salad dressings that are labeled diet in some way. So low fat, fat free. Um, now the big rush right now is keto, but that seems to be fading off again. What I offer as a, a, something to think about as a bottled salad dressing user, if that's part of your story at home, uh, what I want you to think about is where are you buying the bottled salad dressings? Are they in the produce section and currently chilled? Those might be not so bad. What I want you to do is flip them over before you put them in your cart and just read the label. And I'm going to play a game with you here. Here's a challenge. Next time you're at the grocery store and you see two cold salad dressings, one is fat-free and one is regular. So there's fat-free ranch chilled and there's fat-free and there's just regular ranch chilled. Pick them both up, flip them over and check out the labels. I don't even need for you to read the ingredients. I want you to notice that the regular ranch has five ingredients and the fat-free one has 35 ingredients. I want you to notice that the regular Thousand Island and the diet or low fat or fat-free Thousand Island has 25 ingredients. If you, we'll get back to that in a minute. If you're buying your salad dressings in the center of the store where they're shelf stable on the aisle, most of those already are going to have twice as many ingredients as the chilled ones. And one of the reasons is that the preservatives are what are making items that would otherwise go bad prolong their shelf life so that they can be shelf stable and sit in the middle of the aisle with no refrigeration, right? But even over there, if you take a peek at Hidden Valley, regular ranch label just the number of ingredients don't even care about what's actually in them at this moment let's just talk about the number of ingredients and then the hidden valley fat-free ranch right next to it you're going to notice that the label on the fat-free was twice as long it's an inch of material and this is a half an inch of material what are all of those ingredients and why are the diet ones longer than the not in order for the diet industry in the united states to make the fat-free and diet products appealing to the consumer, they have to add in items that are going to create texture, so viscosity, silkiness, thickness, something like that. But they also have to replace some level of flavor because a lot of fats bring flavor to the show. And if I'm gonna do fat free, then I've gotta recreate that flavor somehow. The ingredients that are typically used to do those things are number one, first and foremost, high fructose corn syrup. The reason high fructose corn syrup shows up in all of your fat-free dressings is because first and foremost, it's fat-free. Part two, it's 
thick and viscous. It creates texture in those salad dressings. If you have noticed that your fat-free dressings have an oddly sweet backing to them, if you really think about how sweet like a fat-free ranch is, that's why. The foundational ingredient in that is typically high fructose corn syrup. Um, what I've shared at the studio many times about this is that our mind wants desperately to draw a straight line from health, you know, a healthy word to a healthy food. If it's fat free, that means healthy. So it's a healthy item. Here's some, here's something I show at the studio. This is a post-it note. It's fat free. That doesn't make this health food. It doesn't even make it food. There are a lot of fat free items out there. Those words aren't in themselves health foods. They're just fat free. This post-it note is fat free. Don't eat it. Um, frankly, you could eat the post-it note. It's made out of wood pulp um, and probably some cotton byproduct, which is, by the way, the two ingredients that are in cellulose. Cellulose is another ingredient that you're going to find in your, especially your shelf-stable salad dressings. So remember I said earlier, if you're buying your salad dressings at the grocery store in the produce department and you're not buying the diet version, you're just buying the full fat regular version and flip that label over, it's probably five words that you understand. It's buttermilk, sour cream, chives, green onion, spices. Good. If you're buying that same salad dressing that needs to be chilled because it should be made with, you know, refrigerator items like buttermilk and sour cream. If you're buying it shelf stable over in the center of the aisle, I would guarantee you there's something that's stabilizing it like cellulose, um, which by the way is in fact wood pulp and cotton. Um, and so here's the thing about salad dressings. Turn the labels over and decide for yourself. Here are the five words that I look for number, Big time. Now, there are probably are 15 that I don't want to eat, but here's five that I look for that are, I put the bottle back. If any one of these are in there, it goes back on the shelf. High fructose corn syrup, number one. Number two, and not in this order, but they're all there. High fructose corn syrup, cellulose is an absolute no for me. Sucralose is an absolute no for me. Sucralose has an impact on me physiologically. It creates headaches, um, pin prick headaches, that kind of headache that pings out in one little area, that's sucralose that does that to me. And more specifically, it is the withdrawal from sucralose. So if I eat something with sucralose in eight to 12 hours, I'm going to notice a pinging headache and sort of a disruption physiologically. And that is sucralose doing that to me. Glucose is the next one. The um, pure glucose jacks my blood sugar in a way that the crash from that is very hard to come back from and palm oil. Um, I really want to avoid palm oil as often as I can. And boy, folks, that's hard to do. But there they are. Um, the others that I try to avoid are the BHAs, BHTs, red 40s, yellow fives. But you know what's interesting is if I've already thrown a bottle back because of these ingredients, then the BHAs and BHTs, right? If I'm replacing the middle of the aisle fat-free ranch with an exterior aisle, full fat, chilled ranch, those BHAs and BHTs, they're not going to be in there anyway. So um, what works for you is different than what works for me. What you need to avoid is different than what I need to avoid. I've done a lot of work in the last four years on the way that I eat and cleaning things up and then testing things back in to figure out, in fact, things like, whoa, sucralose was the ingredient that was just spinning my top. I just couldn't I just couldn't function with that stuff in my system. Um, but here's the best answer. Ta -da! <laughs> make your own salad dressings. They're delicious and they're simple. You don't need to make one for every salad every night of the week. Make two. Make one and that's your salad dressing that week. Keep it in the fridge in a mason jar. If it's oil-based, bring it out um, for an hour or two before you use it. Give it a good shake and drizzle it over stuff. Make one or two. You'll be great. This will be great. Um... Bottled salad dressings in the United States, like the last frontier of really badly, um, badly laden with preservative in, um, products that we just need to get rid of, in my humble opinion. Um, and this book just might inspire you to do that. Okay, so Cookbook Corner Dressings by me, Mamie Finnamore. Thanks for joining me. I've got a lot of other things I'm going to load up soon. I'm glad to be back. And if you like what you see here, don't hesitate to subscribe. 
If you found me at A Knitting Chef, you could be my second subscriber if you click it right now. <laughs> If you found me at A Chef's Cooking Studio, subscribe over there, like the video. It helps get that out to other people, but it doesn't hurt for me to see a like here or there and know that maybe I should film a few more of these. Happy to do it. So thanks for joining me. I hope you make some delicious salads and delicious salad dressings. I'll post some photos on Instagram of my results from this book as well. And that's it. Have a beautiful day. Have a delicious day. Eat something fresh and delicious. See you soon. Thank you.